you know, we're, we're, we're doing our thing and then boom, we start running into Chinese guys. And I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. Cause I'm like, I'm like, he's so right. Cause at, at first I'm like, it's, it's gotta be rare. We're not going to see any Chinese. It's going to be like Venezuela as always. Nope. In McAllen running into Chinese to Chinese to Chinese. And so they had to get off. They had to get away. Like that's the one thing. If they're not going to kill. And, and I'm glad they didn't kill these people, by the way, shout out for not doing that. But if they're not going to kill these people, what do they think they're going to do? Like none of them are going to talk. Well, I just think because they, they they're undocumented, they're probably like they have nowhere to go, they have no resources and all that. And which they are right. I, this is like, first of all, that lawsuit is like the first one I think of of it of its kind. But it kind of shows that the trend, right? Where like they get lured in, they promise this one thing, and then all of a sudden they're held captive and they're working in brutal conditions. I don't know the the conditions of New Mexico, but the ones that we're running in the desert. I mean, could you imagine living in a shack? It's 110, no water. I mean, it's and it's this all started, bro. Like I said, this was a Californian issue. And now it, it has spread. Southern Oregon has this issue too, because Southern Oregon, a lot of those those guys work with the with the Northern Cali guys. And like I said, speaking to residents in now we have it in Oklahoma, New Mexico, seeing it, and now the new state is Maine. And Maine, yeah. So if you want to just type in bro Maine Chinese girls, you, you you'll, you'll see right now. They're but, picking um, the whitest states in the union. But bro, but all all that all that weed's coming to here, bro. It's coming to New Jersey. It's coming to New York because uh, you know these guys are you know willing to pay top dollar for that for that Cali tree. Um, and you know they're always going to buy it through an illegal. Mer they will always go illegal. Why would you go legal and pay yeah. even more on the taxes? So yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem with a lot of the legal. So a lot of these case. illegal weed, bro, and in, in in Cali, they pick one guy as a driver, and then that guy's goal is to basically get all that marijuana and then transport it to New York without being stopped by the by the police. All right, let, let's let's back this up for a minute yeah, yeah. with something you said a little while ago because I want to get to the root core of this so you were saying that in exchange for some of the products to put together fentanyl that's why the cartels are making a deal with the chinese so there was this guy ben westoff who wrote a book called fentanyl inc you ever read that no no but i have heard of it I heard right it so he he was on joe rogan in like 2019 it was a great conversation essentially this guy was like a pop culture reporter like he wasn't it, it wasn't reporting on drugs or anything like that. I forget what it was, but he was assigned some story on something, maybe in the music industry. And somewhere along the way, one of the people he interviewed made some offhand comment about fentanyl or whatever. Long story short, this guy starts asking him about it, learns more about it, starts looking into it himself. Can't believe what's going on here. Like, holy shit, like this is exploding. And ends up writing this whole book on it. And as a part of that book, Savage, this dude literally went alone to China by himself Ooh. as an undercover agent and just wanted to see how easy it was to get shit. And it was a joke. He walked out of there with whatever he wanted. I, I can't remember he had the ship at home or whatever. But, but like, it was easy, yeah. Easy. So some of some of when you say that, I'm like, wouldn't it be easy for the cartels? If this guy's getting it, could it, maybe it's more complicated. It's got to be more complicated than that. But in my head, probably I'm like... Huge amounts. But still, like, I feel like there's, there's got to be an easier way. That said, at the same time, the, the contra argument there is that, you know, given some Chinese nationals or internationals coming in as immigrants, some weed fields is a small price to pay. And what was crazy, man, is when we were doing the marijuana reporting, I've, I've been covering the board. I was covering the border before marijuana. That's how I stumbled on it. But we weren't hit we weren't hit with that chinese surge yet yeah and we were putting out a lot of this reporting in in 22 in the oklahoma one we did early 23 but then um early last year i get a call uh from a texas dps which is a, a texas state trooper who, who who works on the board under uh, operation lone star it's called so he calls operation lone star. yeah so operation lone star is uh governor greg abbott's basically him putting the state police on the border saying help these guys out stop fence and i'll stop stop criminals get on it um so I get a call from a Texas DPS agent around, this is, I would say, January, March 2023. Um, and he goes, hey, Jorge, um, I'm, I'm working here in the Rio Grande Valley, which is the, the RGV sector. And he goes, um, hey, man, um, for the first time ever, we're getting Chinese in South Texas. And I'm like, <laughs> interesting. He's like, but it's not just that the fact that we're getting Chinese. He says, we're looking at our numbers. He says we have a 900% explosion in uh in Chinese national now apprehensions in in Rio Grande Valley, Texas. So I said um he's like I think you should you should get down here if you can. So we so we get down to around McAllen, Texas, like I said early 2023. 
and we look at the numbers and we we saw that like, like like I think in the all of last year Texas got like maybe 10 Chinese the whole year. <laughs> and then now we're seeing that in one month they got like 1100 and it, it was like kind of consistent. So that's where the, the guy came in. Like I said, we're, we're seeing a 900% spike. So we hit the ground with him and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing our thing and then boom, we start running into Chinese guys. And I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. Cause I'm like, I'm like, he's so right. Cause at, at first I'm like, it's, it's gotta be rare. We're not going to see any Chinese. It's going to be like Venezuelans as always. Nope. In McAllen running into Chinese to Chinese to Chinese and, um, so first, man, obviously, we, we, we were, we're trying to put an investigation together. Obviously, the, we, we don't speak Mandarin, so we're going to have to use Google Translate and things like that. So we started piecing up things. So one of the first things that we learned instantly, this is through Texas DPS Intelligence, too, is that the Chinese, the reason why the Mexican cartel loves the Chinese migrant smuggling is because the Chinese are willing to pay cartel up to 35 grand and be smuggled into the U.S. Whoa. Where a Venezuelan, the most they yeah. could probably pay is maybe Five. up to six grand. Yeah, you know, like in that in that range, they're not getting up to the tens or whatever. So then you have that aspect where these guys are willing to pay 35 grand. And then one thing you notice straight off the bat with the Chinese is that, that they look clean. Like they don't look like they trek through a country. They're not, you know, like when you run into a Venezuelan or any other any other uh, nationality, I mean, yeah. they, they trek through Mexico. They've been living on the street or whatever. They look completely clean, clean luggage, shoes, outfit, clean, clean. So, um, so what, what we learned is that, um, well, well, first, first we learned about the price tag. So we started learning about that. Um, then I started doing interviews. Um, see, that's in Maine right here. You guys see, just the department says Chinese cartels may be taking millions off uh, illegal pargos in Maine, dude. Um, so then we started doing interviews on Google Translate and about, you know, how, how are you guys getting into Mexico? What's the, the apparatus here? You know, because every nationality is different of how they get into the U.S. So we started learning through Google Translate with, with the Chinese. We're thankful that they were just open with us. Is many of the, what the Chinese were telling us is they have to fly to Ecuador because Ecuador does not require travel visa from Chinese citizens. So a Chinese citizen, if they want to come into the U.S. in this migration journey thing that we're seeing is – through smugglers, with Mexican smugglers, with smugglers also in Colombia and Ecuador, and through uh, WhatsApp and through uh, the Chinese one is WeChat, is they basically got coordinated in all the directions and tips. So basically, the goal for Chinese, you first fly to Ecuador. Ecuador does not require a travel visa from a Chinese citizen, so there's it's not even a hassle. You fly right in. Once they fly to Ecuador, smugglers, and it's already coordinated in their chats, will then get them to uh, Neo Coli, Colombia. From Neil Coley, Colombia, they have uh, hotels just for Chinese migrants. So just then the, for, oh my God. Yeah, so then the, the migrants will stay there in, in Neil Coley, Colombia. The, some will go through um, other uh, other different parts, but mainly they go to, they have to get to Neil Coley, Colombia. From Neil Coley, Colombia, they get on boats. I don't know if you want to just put this on Google Maps so you could see it. Just put like Neil Coley, Colombia, Chinese or, or any of that. Um, so from there, the Chinese get on boats. Those boats will take them to Central America. They'll basically get to, to, to Panama. From there... The Chinese are going through the Darien Gap, which is, I, I think your viewers probably know, it's, yep. it's probably the most dangerous journey yep. in the world, according to the Panamanian government, too. Um, they, Why is that, though? Because all, all the kind of like narco narco criminals that control that jungle, it's just, it's just like one of, it's, I mean, the stories that we hear from interviewing migrants, the, the amount of dead bodies, the women that are constantly right there, there you see a lot of the trees so that's where you see like the trees with all the women's underwear there um we've I, I, i've done interviews and seen these videos myself to verify where migrants are literally walking over dead bodies in the darien gap even kids which was it, it's it's tough to see so it's it's super dangerous to to, to go through but the, the chinese will take a boat from neocoli colombia they'll get to around that that panama area and then from panama they will go through the darien gap on foot so even the panamanian government if you look at their records has a record number of chinese nationals because they have they have it registered of going through the uh, darien gap once they go through the Darien Gap, we, we'll talk about this later too, bro. Nicaragua plays a key role in our, in our immigration crisis because Nicaragua allows irregular migration to the U.S. And they know it too. They'll allow the Chinese to go through. They'll make it obviously to Guatemala and they'll get to Tapachula, Mexico. So once they cross into Mexico, the first big border town for them is Tapachula. Technically, migrants are not allowed to go past Tapachula without a, a travel document because then they're technically in Mexico illegally. What Mexican officials are doing, and they're playing a role in this migration crisis, is they're issuing migrants, I'm doing this in air quotes, a humanitarian visa pass. Oh, boy. So this humanitarian visa, normally it goes for 30 to 60 days. So this humanitarian visa technically is a lot, it allows you to be in Mexico for 30 to 60 days and allows you to travel. The only reason government officials are issuing these travel visas is because they know these people are not going to stay in Mexico. They're headed to the U.S. So basically yes. they're saying, here... 
Just go. Just get yeah. to the U.S. Dump it over here. So uh, Chinese migrants are giving these travel visas. And all the nationalities, the other two, but we're just uh, talking about Chinese right now. Is they're giving yep. these travel visas. From there, this, the Mexican smugglers through WeChat and WhatsApp have already coordinated their travel path. So the majority that we're finding out right now are either from Tapa Chula will get into Cancun or will get into Mexico City. From Cancun to Mexico City, they'll buy flights directly uh, to Tijuana, Mexico. From Tijuana, the smugglers will then meet them at the airport and then they'll um, they'll take them an hour out of out of Tijuana in an area called uh, Tecate and they'll cross in, uh, illegally into the area that we are, that you, you saw me earlier in, uh, Jacumba, Hot, Jacumba Hot Springs, right out of San Diego. So that's kind of the, the, the what, what, what we learned through our interviews is was this all starts in Ecuador um, they up to up to thirty five thousand. They're willing to be, to be paid, and then as soon as they get into Mexico, uh, government officials issue them that travel visa. So then they're freely allowed to travel, and then the smugglers have already coordinated the flights. They'll be like, "Hey, from Tapachula, we need you to make it to Cancun or Mexico City," and then from there they'll get to to TJ, TJ, right out of out of Tecate, and then into uh, Jacuma Hot Springs. And that's kind of the um, migration trail for Chinese right now. It's interesting that it starts in Ecuador. I just had Luis Navia in here. I think you oh, were saying yep. you checked out that mm-hmm. episode. So. One of the things he was telling me, I can't remember if he talked about this off camera or on, but either way, you know, he's really wired in to this day to where shit's going down and whatever, because like he's worked with the government forever now. And he was like, Ecuador is a fucking mess. He's like, that's Mm -hmm. that's the next like cartel gang takedown spot. And I forget some of the details he was telling me. I think obviously some of it had to do with their government or whatever, but that's interesting that China would pick that as like the jump off point and some chinese men actually fly to first they, they'll get to istanbul uh, turkey and then some are some are getting issued fake documents in turkey and then, and then we'll then fly into uh into ecuador how do they get issued fake like is it like id chief <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like what are they getting well it's literally like 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 fake passports to, to uh to just bypass literally just getting on getting on an airplane and then i mean we we find that we find this more later in the reporting but this like i said back in Back in 2023, this was early on in Texas, you know, okay. so 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 we learned about the Chinese migration. Like I said, we, we learned about how they're coming and little little other things, which we found interesting. And then um, late last year, early this year, it, it just made a huge push into Tijuana. So then we started going to Tijuana and then we started learning more about how the cartels were smuggling the Chinese there, bi- making big bucks. But one thing that we noticed on the Tijuana border particularly is that all the Chinese would... Um, will destroy their documents on the Mexican side or right on the border. So then when, when Border Patrol agents apprehend them, they have no documents. The vetting is is super difficult for Chinese because one thing you have to get you have to remember, if you're a Border Patrol agent and you vet these guys, you could really only go off information in the US, which if these guys have never been, you don't you don't have that. And but the what other, about the migrants though too? But, a lot of them haven't been, right? Yeah, yeah but but this but this is just this is particularly okay. just just this is the Chinese. The other thing here is uh, China's government does not share a database with with, with the U.S. So if you're a border mm-hmm. patrol agent, and let's say you you come across this guy from China, and he's a communist soldier over there, or whatever the case is, you don't know. You don't know. He could be a criminal in China. We don't know. So when we do the vetting. Hey, we don't know. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.